welcome to the Movie Section Show. My name is Fariba, and today, because it is the last day of 2022, what better way to end up the year with a best movies list of the year? So, uh, as much as the fact that I did give a list of the worst movies I've seen in 2022, it does not take away the fact that 2022 still did have a lot of great movies that came out. Some movies that I actually was amazed by how uh, how great they were. Like, I mean... Things I didn't think were going to do well, and yet they did. And I decided, you know what? These are some of the movies I thought were the best of the best this year. I think there were a lot of great movies overall. Um, definitely a lot of different genres as well, especially in the horror aspect. I think there was a lot of great horror films that came out this year, which, again, is a genre that I'm not too, you know, invested in. But I do take the time to watch, and they it really exceeded expectations. But yeah. Without further ado, let's get into my top 10 movies list of 2020. Before I go down into my top 10 list, I do want to give a couple of honorable mentions. So movies that, you know, were pretty great, I think are worth mentioning, but just did not make my top 10 list. Uh, the first one I want to mention is The Woman King. Uh, that one's just a really great action film in general. It has Viola Davis as the lead character. And I think this is one of the cases where we really see just a female black character you know shining on the big screen and really just you know putting in so much emotion and just so much of the energy onto the big screen and again you've got to give credit to viola davis because again she is amazing she really just you know mesmerizes on the big screen like she really does a great job as playing the woman king in this film and i think that part of that is because of her just really just highlighting this this important character on the big screen and really just becoming inspiration for a lot of young girls especially young black girls and not just that but as the fact that even though she is a lead character there are a lot of also great supporting uh cast members who also really support uh viola davis and they all do such an amazing job in trying to execute this film again a really great lots of great action as well um again Really great film. Definitely one of the more memorable films I've seen this year. Really entertaining to watch as well. Definitely worth mentioning. Another film I do want to mention is The Fablements. That is a Steven Spielberg film. Um, again, right off the fact, this is a comedy of age film. It's actually a semi-biography by Steven Spielberg. So this is actually inspired by parts of his own story, uh, parts of his own childhood. Um, and just kind of like showing again, like, the obstacles that a lot of us have to go through whether it be trying to pursue your dreams or and trying to deal with some of the more you know hardships of being in a family especially in the, in this case where a big part of that is sort of uh the character the main character story and his relationship with his mother and how things kind of you know start to really dip a little bit with the family and how that impacts him and we see a big part of that just again going into just the mindset of this character and what he's dealing with and how you know, everything that's happened, he's come to accept things as well as, you know, understanding his own talents, his own abilities as a filmmaker and how it, how the films, how basically like cinema and just making movies is what really is what keeps him, you know, motivated to do what he does. And I feel like this is a film that really is inspirational and what it, and, and what it's trying to portray. Because again, I mean, this is based on Steven Spielberg's lifestyle, his own childhood and showing how like for him, how he translates his own story into this in this into this film and showing again just like how again the dynamic between the character and the family as well as how he's you know pre remains adamant about pursuing his dreams despite kind of you know uh this this, this approval from from his uh jewish family so again a really great film uh didn't quite hit the top 10 list just because i felt like there were other films that i enjoyed more but definitely a very inspirational story that deserves a mention the film i did want to mention is do revenge a, a netflix movie that actually is getting some mentions um some honorable mentions um and yeah this is a film again like i'm not too big on coming of age stories um or just teen flicks in general but this is a film that I did not have a lot of expectations for. I just I thought it was going to be a typical teen flick movie, and it really is just a film that that really kind of surprised me. Uh, for one thing, like the whole revenge aspect of it, and just sort of the plot, like the plot twist and everything like that. Like I didn't, I never thought that this is a film that would have done such a well done job of doing that. Of like you know giving us a deception of these characters and only to see that oh there's something else and giving us kind of and again i really enjoy films where it kind of takes a whole u-turn in good ways and again the plot twists and everything like that and this film 
really does a great job of really just executing the plot twists of this of what's going on within you know the story especially because again you do have again this kind of incorporates more of the friendship aspect to it but also kind of this deep underlying you know vengeance that's going on between some of the characters that we do meet in this film um again uh, you got to give credits to camilla mendez as well as maya hawk they both do such an incredible job in this film but again you got to give credits to the you know the way that the, mo that the movie really just executes its own story like it's not just like any typical teen flick film like, it's not just you know a you know an inspirational film that you know that we got from mean girls this is like going deep down into like the more complexity of what the story is and the complexity of friendship and it does such a great job of doing that with all these plot twists so something that i really wanted to give a big you know shout out for as well down the line i also want to mention turning red uh again this film does a great job of kind of giving this illusion of like periods which isn't really discussed as much but it should be and it does such a great job of really just discussing more of this again when you look into this film it's not just an illusion about periods of course it's also kind of going into the themes of modern daughter relationship and just kind of this you know i wouldn't say generational trauma but just sort of like how uh just kind of this whole parenting of it and just the relationship that kind of comes out of it and we see a huge part of this being a big part of this film and just again showing just how like at the end of the day this is kind of who we are just becoming this acceptance of it and just have a really great message about it and i know a lot of people kind of got really you know offended by this one for some reason i mean i don't know what's wrong with talking about periods periods it's a very very you know common thing it's part of the theme of biological system and trying to actually educate what it's like in a way that's a bit more fun and friendly i think or family friendly i think that this is a film that does a really great job of just executing that i think that this is a film that should be seen whether you're an adult or a kid so definitely wanted to mention that as well a few films uh till this is a film again that is a biographical film uh, that focuses on emma till and his death but also focusing more so on a mother's you know grief and how she tries to basically get justice for her son's death again this is a film i i that i did not think that you know was going to land as one of the best films of the year but it definitely did um i mean for one point you really have to applaud uh the performances in this film especially the actress who plays uh uh tell's mother she what she just the way that she really puts in the emotional weight into this character like you are following her and you just feel like you can not only sympathize and empathizing with her but you are understanding what it's like to feel mother's grief how she wants to get justice for her son's death and i mean of course with the period and all that like it's there's even more of those obstacles that are added to it that just makes this journey even a bit more complex and the way that they really executed the story was just done so well without you know going too deep into any of the controversy and everything that it does so in a way that it is you know not so satisfying but tasteful enough that it is you know it allows you to really understand the story really get into character and understand like what is going on again the big part of that is the performance by the main actress i can't remember her name right now but she does a phenomenal job in this film i i mean i'm already seeing that she is already being overlooked in the ward season but i hope that maybe as we get more into the ward season that she will get a bit more attention later on but definitely a film that really touched me i think i actually was crying in the film as well like i i've never felt so heartfelt so heartbroken watching this story as much as i've seen something like tell and again really effective film that that really hits you right in the right in the fields it's, it's just a great film like i again one of the best i've seen so far this year so i want to give the last few mentions of the last two films i want to mention mrs harris goes to paris this is a really heartwarming film i mean this is a film that you know it's just like oh you know it's just a fun film where you're just following characters journey just to you know do something and just fulfill a dream and i felt like this is a film that as you go into this you're really rooting for the character to somehow you know make it to the end of the line and just i mean just to see just kind of how the dynamic of it as well like you see the, the true villains you see the true friends you see all of this that's happening onto the big screen and you're just kind of like watching this character uh, mrs harris 
if you haven't really figured out who the character's name is, but this is Harris, and just kind of like you're just rooting for her. That's just what it is. You're rooting for her. You're enjoying kind of what's going on. She's a very you know tender, charming character that you know there isn't anything bad about her. And the thing is that not just what she's trying to pursue in terms of like what her dreams are and what she wants to accomplish, but more so kind of how she's helping out the people around her and how it's like like you just want her to succeed like that i feel like if you really want to kind of just have a happy film this would be it for it um see someone as tender and nice and amazing as someone as mrs harris it's just like wow like i mean this is a movie that i truly think that was really overlooked just again because like again this is a movie that you know a lot of people would know about unless you know you know films and everything like that but i again this is Paris Goes to Paris was definitely a movie that really hit it up a notch and I think was worth uh, giving a call for. All right, so those were, I know those are a lot of honorable mentions just because I really want to discuss a lot of them, but those are my honorable mentions. So we're going to go right down into my top 10 movies of 2022. So starting off this list, I have The Northman at number 10. This is a film that I, you know, I had some pretty good expectations for it leading up to the film, leading up to the movie. It had a really big and great cast like Nicole Kidman, Anya Taylor Joy, Alexander Skarsgård, um, Ethan Hawke, um, and not just that, but I think the big part of it is the aesthetics of it. It does have this focus of a Viking story. I believe it is actually um, inspired by the legend, like a legendary story that Viking you know, that you know a lot of Vikings would know, and I think that's what they do here. But I, I think one of the bigger aspects is that when you do watch this film, you do get a lot of Hamlet vibes out of it. Like, that's what I felt going into this film. Like, just every single aspect of it, like, you got, like, these Hamlet feels to it. Um, definitely a bit more in a bloodier way because Hamlet is someone who is a bit more, you know, he's a bit more smart, he's a bit more sharp, he's clever with how he does his thing. But here it's like someone is really, you know, spot on with trying to get their revenge. And we really see this incredible journey of how he tried to reach to that point and yeah really great film that I thought you know had you know a balance of like the bloodiness but also the drama as well as the dialogue and again the big aspect of it is the world-class performances by the cast especially from Nicole Kidman and Alexander Skarsgård they both really just nail it like you really get this sort of like this um Gertrude and Hamlet vibe between them in this case it is you know different characters but but yeah definitely a movie that I thought really deserve to be one of the best films of this year again it is not getting a lot of attention of course i believe it may have been flopped at the box office but it doesn't but it doesn't speak to kind of the quality of this film i mean this is a film that really really is top notch the technicals are great the action sequences are amazing and also the and it also has this balance of drama that you know it doesn't become too you know overstuffed with the action like the main aspect is still the hero's journey and the hero's journey is what we continue to look into and watch and follow and it ends up doing so in a way that that it, it, it builds up in a way that it, it it does finish it off in a really satisfying well-produced climatic moment so yeah starting off with number nine on this list i have she said so if you are not aware what this movie is about it is focused on the harvey weinstein allegations and just the build up to what you know led to just this uh worldwide phenomenon this unexpected scandal, this controversy that led into, okay, Harvey Weinstein's history and his, uh, and again, the allegations against him uh, that were going way back into the 1990s. And I think that when you look into this film, it definitely has the whole all presidents men vibes going on because it is about investigative journalism. Um, and this could have been a hit or miss in some ways, but for the most part, this was a big hit. For me, the story was very, very emotional. Uh, just going into just the depths of what's going on with the characters, how they're going through, understanding what they're feeling. I think that was a big aspect of understanding and trying to, you know, understand who the characters are, whether it be the journalists or the victims who have, you know, endured the uh, the assaults by Weinstein and understanding what's going on and just the build up to how they led to just this, you know, the famous uh, New York Times article that changed sort of the whole aspect and just leading up to the Me Too movement. Um, and yeah, with the most part, I think for this film, like 
this none of this would have happened if it wasn't for the performances. I mean, Carrie Mulligan and Zoe Kazan, they both do such an immaculate job as playing their respective characters and just getting to the bottom of just the whole investigative, you know, approach to it with such, you know, confidence and, you know, the way that they really exude on the screen, like you can feel like you're again, you feel like you're rooting for them, hoping that they do get the the evidence of it, because again, it's not just understanding just the uh, the mentality that a lot of these characters are feeling, but it's also a big part of understanding of how to gather that, you know, that, that evidence, right? Because you need to have all, because if you're a journalist, you have to have all these, you know, those facts that backs up these claims, but you can't just base it upon he said, she said, right? Hence the name she said. So um, yeah, a really great film that I thought the performances were top notch. The story was very powerful, very emotional. Um, again, a movie that really keeps you invested into what's going on with the story itself and understanding what led to those moments. And again, really phenomenal film. I do hope to see a lot more attention for this film going into the award season, perhaps for some of the acting categories. But yeah, one of the best I've seen so far. Getting on number eight is Nope, Jordan Peele's Nope. Um, yeah, this, I mean, I don't think there's ever really been a movie where any of Peele's films have ever really been a miss at any point. Um, I do think that Get Out still is his best film to this day, but Nope was a fun film. Um, I think a lot of us were just always wondering what this film was going to be about. I think eventually as we start to see more of these trailers, we got this vibe that there's going to be a bit more of this alien aspect to it, but we didn't know how deep that the whole story is going to be or what that's going to lead up to. Um, nope, right? Like we've seen that with Nope, we have, you know, brother, sister who, you know, uh, they, they own a, you know, horse kind of company where they lend off their horses for production purposes, for films, basically, and just seeing how that kind of leads up to sort of this alien aspect, like, very weird, but also very intriguing. I mean, it is a really weird concept, like, the part where we get to the alien, like, the revelation of who this alien is, like, to see this cloud, and then, like, to get to the final moments where, like, we see this alien is how it looks. It's so bizarre, but it also keeps you really intrigued with this whole, with the whole concept of it all. And not just that, but I think the big part of it is not just like the alien aspect, but also this relationship between uh, the two characters, OJ and I believe uh, Emerald. Yes, Emerald. Emerald Haywood. Uh, they both, and just seeing their dynamic, like we see between Dana Puglia and Kiki Palmer and how, again, their dynamic as these siblings, just seeing how they grow and how their relation just really just improves from that point on, how they get closer. And just seeing, again, just this really satisfying conclusion that we get to the end of the film. Like, I, I, again, it just makes you feel really, like, happy. Not happy, but it makes you feel really pleased with the outcome that you get out of this film. Uh, again, Nope has, of course, it's kind of its, you know, subtle humor. I think that's one of the great things about Jordan Peele's films that even though it has sort of this horror aspects or thriller aspects to them, there is always that subtle humor to kind of balance out the tone just to, like, you know, just to give us the reality check of, like, these are these are characters that, you know, are real. They have their own things going on. And, yeah, I mean, just as we're seeing things, they're also seeing things. And, you know, just their reactions are just as natural as human beings, right? And just to see, again, this 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 whole film where, again, they're dealing with the alien story and how they're trying to, you know, are trying to get rid of it, in a sense, to, you know protect just to you know just to save just the town and, and themselves as well again a really great way to do it uh again the ending was great i mean a, a lot of it is just a really great thing really bizarre com uh, concept but it just worked out very well in the end and i don't think there's anyone else who would have been able to do this sort of film other than jordan peele so again definitely one of the best films i've seen so far again i love love uh nope uh definitely one of the best ones i've seen this year up at number seven, I have another biopic, which is Elvis. Um, so of course, like for me, I've never really grew up with Elvis. Like when he, like, like when he was still around. Like I wasn't really born around that time, of course. But I am very familiar with Elvis Presley and just his legacy as one of the, you know, greatest musicians that we've, you know, seen in in history. And now we have this movie where it's like dedicated to his life story and just kind of how his rise and fall as the, you know, the king of rock and roll. Um, and again, like, I think the big aspect of this film, like, when we look at the trailers, the first thing that comes up and pops up is just the performance, whether it be from Tom Hanks or uh, Austin Butler. But I think for the most part, I think we can all say that the highlight of this film is without a doubt Austin Butler. Like, 
just to see him on the big screen as playing Elvis. Like, I mean, when you are thinking about like how whether or not an actor can embody the the historical figure in any way, in any form, whether it be just the you know the physics of it or the manners of it, like there's always that question that we always have. Like, we see Mami Malik really do a great job as becoming Freddie Mercury or the fact that, you know, Renee Zellweger was able to really just showcase the idea of who Judy Garland is. And in this film, Austin Butler just, I mean, he was just phenomenal. Like, I think he was almost perfect as Elvis. Like, he nailed his mannerism. He nailed his moves. He nailed his, you know, his 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 accent, his speak, his, his vernacular, his, his way of really speaking and just, again, his behavior and everything like that. Like, as you're watching Elvis, you're thinking that you are seeing Elvis, not just Austin Butler, but you're seeing Elvis. And I mean, Austin Butler really puts his heart and soul into playing this character and does so in a way that I believe is actually one of the best performances I've seen this year. Um, I even was saying that, you know, once I had seen Elvis, that I was like, man, I, I feel like, you know, not only has Austin Butler may have, not only has he just gotten himself a nomination for best actor, but I do think that he might be a front runner. Because he really, really, really just, like, like he really took this character, and, and it took this character, took it to him personally, and really just showed it off in a way that anybody who has witnessed Elvis would be able to, you know, would be able to, would be able to have a smile on their faces knowing that this is how they were able to execute this film. Um, I mean, yeah, this is a film, and yeah, I know, aside from that, like, we, again, we do see kind of this relationship between him and Colonel Parker, and just showing the shadiness of Colonel Parker and how he played a big part of just kind of his downfall in a way, and a big part of that storyline that they really do go into depth of. So, again, Tom Hanks does a great job as well. I mean, I'd not be surprised if Tom Hanks also gets a couple of best supporting nods, but I think, again, the big part of this film is mostly Austin Butler. He really carries Elvis Presley in this film, and doing so that we are able to kind of immerse ourselves into his story, understanding who he is, learning who he's at, um, kind of understanding his, again, his his uh, mindset and mentality that's going on throughout the film and how he kind of changes from here and there and how he's feeling. Um, and again, the influences as well. Like, I think that we also see a lot of big aspects of like the influences of what led him to be the Elvis Presley, right? So like the fact that he got a lot of, like he would go into town and get a lot of inspiration from R&B singers or uh, from a lot of jazz singers and all that sort of stuff, right? Like, that was where his inspiration is. I think this film really nails it in terms of really showing who Elvis Presley is, whether it be how he grew up, how, you know, who, how he was influenced, um, what happened to him, the things that led to kind of, you know, his, his sabbatical, his hi hiatus, what led to his comeback later on, and what led to his downfall, and really going into depths of that. And I think that Baz Luhrmann really does a great job of just, for the most part, just showcasing the the life story of Elvis in a way that is done in a tasteful way as well. Because again, it, it's not like, because again, we all know with Elvis's life, like things were a bit harder on him later on in the years that eventually did lead to his death later on. But it was done graciously. It was done well. I do think that the film was slightly too long and like maybe about 20 minutes too long. But aside from like the length of the film, I think it does such a great job of really just showing this, uh, this glamour of who Elvis Presley is and again a lot of that you got to give credits to is again Austin Butler which I who I do believe is going to be the front runner of the best actor award going into award season so yeah like going into number six I have The Menu which stars Anya Taylor-Joy and Ralph Fiennes and Nicholas Holt um this movie came out later in the year as well um I knew that watching the trailers there was this movie was going to be I was going to like it just because of how you know dark and sinister feels and just kind of this weird vibe that yes it has a name the menu but it doesn't seem as if it is a movie that is about cooking right it's that it's not a movie about cooking when you get from the from the trailers right um and of course that was not the case but once i saw this film i i mean even with the expectations i had the expectations were exceeded just to see how dark and sinister but also humorous it is in terms of this execution because the big part of this film is kind of poking at the elit elitism of everything and just kind of the, hip the, the hip hypocrisy of the of the riches the billionaires the people who are you know have the power of whatever right and have this so-called you know expertise and whatnot and that's something that we see in this film where it's like well we have this chef who's been through you know 
all of it, right? Like, he's so fed up. You know what? Let's just get my revenge. And basically, this is kind of a revenge tale that goes after some of the worst people ever who, you know, who he feels that should be punished. And this is what this movie is essentially about. Like, again, getting back at the elite and in some form and some way. And again, he's a servant. And I think that, again, one of the things about this movie is that it's so subtle, it's so nuanced and with its meaning and its message and its themes. Because again, it, it is basically kind of poking at the elites and sort of just getting this revenge aspect of it. Um, and again, a lot of it is really thriller based. So it's like, okay, well, it is very sinister. It has this, you know, this dark tone into it. And just showing again, sort of how each character, or particularly just like, I mean, in this case, like the big focuses are the big focus of this film is basically Ralph Fiennes' character as well as Anya Taylor Joyce, um, how they're both sort of just kind of playing this mind game, or at least in the case of Anya Taylor's character, playing this mind game and trying to, you know, find a way to escape this. Because technically speaking, she wasn't supposed to be there in the first place. Um, and again, just everything that unravels is just really just clever, it's sharp. Um, I think the best thing about it is that it's a performance, especially from Ralph Fiennes, just to see kind of this confidence this this power that he has up on the stage talking to his you know his customers in a way quote unquote and you know really just showing himself giving his emotionality giving just exuding kind of how he feels and why and just justifying that right in a way that it, it makes you feel a bit pleased by it. like you're sort of rooting for him as well and also like you're Kind of understanding his sort of perspective of why he's doing everything right so it's like you're like even though he's technically the antagonist he is the villain of the story you're sort of like you know it's like okay but i get what you're saying and i, I think that you kind of have a point and i think that's a big part of like this comp this complexity of this film like it really goes deep dive into that and i love how this film really does the whole comp the complex of like you know the complexity of the mindset of like each of these characters especially Ralph Fiennes' character and just so, uh, sort of leading up to kind of the climax where I think by the end of the day their fates were accepted and again great film loved it I mean again definitely just blew my mind a little bit just how you know just how original and you know uh sharp it was and I think again it wouldn't have been it wouldn't have worked had it not been for the cast again mind-blowing <laughs> Picking up my number five spot is the Banshees of Inisherin. I may have just butchered that, but yeah, this is a movie that has Brendan Gleeson and uh, Colin Farrell uh, as these two sort of friends who are somehow no longer friends. It's a really weird, dark comedy. Um, but yeah, I saw this film, and I, I mean, I did not anticipate how bizarre things were going to be. For one thing, because. When you look at Gleason's character, like he doesn't want to be friends with Colin Farrell's character anymore, and just kind of like how we have just kind of this desperation that we see out of Farrell's character and trying to you know understand his mindset, why this is all happening, and trying not to be not to feel lonely about it, and not just that, but to see kind of his sister just kind of you know trying to reason with him, like it's a really weird dynamic that you see, and in a way that yes, it's supposed to be funny, but it also takes a really dark turn. I uh, definitely something I never really expected to see out of this film, but it does in a way that it kind of gives a reflection of everything, just like, you know, the friendship of everything. Because again, this is a movie that is focused on friendship, and yet, like, everything kind of goes wrong, but in a way that it is kind of leading up to a lesson of what's going on around whether with each of these characters, um, whether it be, you know, someone trying to move on or someone trying to, you know, teach them a lesson. Again, things that I never anticipated to happen in this film, which is, again, I guess you can say it's a bit weird, a uh, bit odd concept, but I think that what really made this film work is a lot of this dynamic between the characters and understanding sort of their mentality, their motivations, their goals, um, how they all have their own thing going on, and kind of just like, not just, just the characters themselves, but this whole town in general and how the whole town itself kind of has an impact on these characters and seeing how that affects how each of these characters make their decisions and what they do in the long in the long run, right? And again, just to see this, uh, again, the chemistry between uh, between Gleason and uh, Beryl is great. I mean, just to see this tumultuous uh, sort of friendship that's happening between them and how things are just keep, keep just falling apart. Um, 
and things that are just so weird and un just unimaginable. I felt like, I, in the end of the day, I enjoyed it because it was just a really different movie about friendship in a way that is a bit more of a turmoil type of friendship, but in a way that also kind of gives off like this kind of leads up to a really good climax of what's happening in the film and what leads to it. Um, ways that makes you, again, you are laughing, you feel really deep about it, then at one point you're feeling sorry. There's even one part where like you get so invested with some of, you know, the side characters that at the end of the day when things start to kind of unravel, it starts to kind of become a big hit, right? I think this is a film that really kind of goes into the roller coaster of emotions, whether it be you're laughing, whether it be you are, you know, your heart is broken or kind of feeling a bit, you know, indifferent about what's going on. Again, this is a film that really does a great job of just kind of playing around with our emotions as an audience, whether it be just looking at the friendship and looking at what's happening with the characters themselves. And again, like, I feel like this is a film that I really thought, like, I, I, I could still keep on thinking about just, again, kind of just the way it really executes that whole concept. So definitely one of the best films I've seen so far. Definitely a really unusual dark comedy that really does a great job of just playing with your emotions. Number four spot, I have the Batman. The Batman, yes, the 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 Batman that is the Robert Pattinson Batman. Um, Yeah, uh, I think a lot of us knew that this movie was going to be, going to do really great because I think the one part that this film differs from every other Batman adaptation is that it has a bit more of that broody Batman sort of feel. So that's more of like a crime thriller than really just like the more superhero aspect of the Batmans that we've seen before in prior uh, adaptations. Um, but in this one, we definitely see a bit more of just this 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 neo noir crime thriller Batman where it's like he is kind of has more of a detective sort of uh, identity than really just more of like a being a superhero type who's just being a vigilante. Uh, and I feel like that was a really interesting like, way to kind of characterize this this version of Batman. And I think that with Robert Pattinson, it really I think he really fits this sort of this identity of Batman because. I think with him, he definitely knows how to exude sort of this uh, this particular uh, specific sort of trait of Batman, which is, again, his broodiness, um, this darkness, and kind of, like, being a bit really introvert as to, like, kind of, you know, going around with everyone around him and just, you know, trying to understand what's going on in this, you know, in this, in Gotham City and just trying to catch all the bad guys in some form, someone, whether it be the Riddler or the Penguin or Falcone, but yeah, this film really just nails it. Like, I mean, yes, I do think that it is a pretty long film. I believe this one was another three-hour film that we saw this year. Um, but even then, I think that the execution of the story really fits. Like, it, it really feels nice to kind of have a different dynamic, different vibe of a Batman story that we see on the big screen. Um, I think for the most part, like, considering that, like, a couple of years ago, people were, like, literally, like, upset about the Robert Pattinson, you know, casting as Batman. I think that Pattinson really does, you know, prove all those naysayers wrong. He does a really great job in this film just embodying his version of Batman, giving his idea of who Batman is, and doing so in a way that also fits with the tone of this film, because again, it is a neo-noir Batman film. Um, I think the only sort of, uh, I, I wouldn't say only, but I would probably say some of the more critiques I have for this film is that the final act was a bit slightly underwhelming, like, considering everything that we got from the first, you know, first two acts, like, the final act did kind of feel like a generic sort of superhero ending that we would get, and I think that I guess that's kind of hard to really just try to deviate from when it comes to the superhero, like, the superhero genre, but aside from just the small itty-bitty issue that I had with the, fi with the final act, I think overall this film does a great job of just, again, setting up the characters, setting up who Batman is, who his villains are, I think even with Paul Dano, like, even though he was in this film for, like, a, for not even, like, more than 10 minutes, he really does a, just a harrowing job, unsettling job as being the Riddler in a way that, again, that is just so pristine, it's so raw that, again, it kind of makes you more scared about the character. And, again, you got to give credit to all the performances from the cast as well as just the story and just the tone of how everything is executed. Again, I think... I would never forget the car chase scene. That is probably one of the best car chase scenes I've seen in my life. I mean, it kind of gave me a lot of the bullet vibes from um, Stephen McQueen's film. But yeah, 
great film. I think that it's really interesting for me to kind of actually have a Batman movie in this list because um, I typically would have more MCU movies on the list than, you know, DCU. But technically speaking, this is not a DCU, but it is a really great Batman movie that I look forward to seeing the sequel whenever that comes out. We're really getting down to the last three top three films of my list and taking the number three spot is everything everywhere all at once. I think that there I don't think there's any person who has not listed everywhere everything everywhere all at once as their top 10 movie in their list. I think that this is a film that really just revolutionized just kind of our mentality of what movie is right um, and this is a film that it had sort of this multiverse story, but again, even with the whole multiverse story being the main premise of what's going on, there's definitely a deeper meaning about what's going on. There's a really deep message that's, that is part of just kind of what this film is going into, whether it be the father, whether it be the mother daughter relationship, um, the the, uh, the subtleties of depression and sort of just this acceptance of what's going on, this changing world and everything like that. And sort of just like thinking of how like, had things have been gone differently, how, these kids like how I think I heard the character's name is Eileen but uh how you know Michelle Yao's character kind of would have had a different lifestyle if she had done something else or had chose a different path um and we definitely see kind of this again this dissection of the character's you know psyche right like understanding how they're feeling their mentality of things what they're going through and how again like with everything that's going on how does this affect this you know Michelle Yao's character and we see again just kind of how this evolution this growth out of Yao's character and how yes even though she is sort of the chosen one and and, and you know in, in the different worlds that she's in that in the end of the day like the big part of what this movie is is just again kind of finding this acceptance um trying to you know forgive i think the forgiveness part is a big aspect of what this film was about trying to forgive um because again there was a lot of nuance to kind of this this depression right like michelle's y'all daughter how she's feeling depressed and how she isn't feeling accepted how she you know how there's so much of this you know hardship that she's going through that like that as, unless she gets the support that it's only going to kind of take a downturn and again we see again this this journey of how yao's character really goes through whether it be you know under trying to understand her daughter's you know how she's feeling what she's going through trying to find the acceptance out of it and trying to you know change things and trying to find this forgiveness and i really appreciate this film like i think again when if you were to ever say which was the best multiverse movie it's without a doubt everything everyone all at once doctor strange is nothing compared to what this film has done it really does show the uh, the concept of multiverse very well it kind of goes into the concept of it it, down to the T explains it into into detail of how it works and then trying to and after having explained that it really allows us to easily understand what's going on in terms of like the bigger picture of this film which is again just this father daughter father not father daughter sorry mother daughter relationship and just finding forgiveness and again lots of great action scenes i mean again we cannot forget about the action like this film had literally everything the the drama the nuance the subtleties the action um, the great performances by Michelle Yao and the remaining characters, especially, I can't remember the actress's name, but the one who played the daughter, she does such a great job as well. Like, just again, this, this dynamic, this chemistry that we see from everyone, I mean, it, it's really top notch. I mean, there's a reason why Everything Everyone All, All At Once is one of the most talked about movies this year, just because it really just nails everything. It's a very unique concept. Well, it's not really a unique concept, but it does elevate the concept of multiverse and really does it in a way that. Is a lot it's very relatable and also kind of discussing the depths of just a lot of what's going on in this relationship of this family so again really great film uh definitely one of the most memorable ones i've seen this year taking the number two spot is none other than ryan johnson's glass onion and knives out mystery and i know i just dropped my movie review yesterday about this film i can't even just going i just can't even express how much i enjoyed glass onion i had high expectations and it literally met my expectations because again i'm a huge knives out fan um again there was a bit of the skepticism and concern of whether or not a sequel like this would be able to meet the expectations of the original but it, it far exceeded that i mean 
for one thing, it was a very entertaining movie that really showed a whole different dynamic, this whole different concept of, again, a murder mystery movie, whether it be, you know, trying to do a whodunit party that goes wrong, uh, which is a very fun, entertaining, uh, which is a fun, entertaining concept, but also just really dissecting into kind of this friendship and this relationship that's happening within the group and understanding kind of how things are between them and what led to sort of the moments that led to the, to the, you know, the main aspect of this main case of the film. And again, like, this was just, again, I think, as I mentioned before in my, my movie review, I still prefer Knives Out over Glass Onion, but without a doubt, I think that Glass Onion is a very good, uh, you know, follow-up to Knives Out. I think, I believe I actually put Knives Out as one of my, as my number one film in 2019 when, you know, the, when the movie had came out. And for me, just to see that Glass Onion is my second, you know, best film that I thought was the second best film of the year. It just says a lot. I mean, this is a great film that really takes it up a notch with the comedy, the, the dynamics, the, you know, uh, the subtleness, the, you know, the, the, the poking fun of the elites. It really does a great, I think Ryan Johnson really does a great job of just nailing all those aspects while still kind of keeping what is, what basically the things that made Glass, you know, made Knives Out such a great film and putting it into Glass Onion and still making its own movie in the sense that it's not just, you know, a sequel, but like its own sort of case and allowing us again, I think Janelle Monet does a great job with this character. I think that again, she is a standout in this film just to watch her, you know, as Helen slash cast, just, you know, on this big screen and just really, you know, trying to get to the bottom of everything and her trying to investigate everything. It was just really fun just watching her as this character. Um, again, there's a reason why when you, go, like for me, like I keep going back to this movie every time that I, you know, I think about Glass Onion because I love, because there isn't really not an iconic moment in this film, whether it be the beginning with the, you know, trying to unfold, trying to, un trying to unbox the, the puzzle box, um, some of the lines at the kombucha or birdie. I mean, everybody is just such a, everyone does such a great job in this film without a doubt, whether it be the character, the story and everything like that. And again, it's a really fun film that at, by the end of the day, you are very pleased by the outcome of it. Like again, just again, the whole concept with the Mona Lisa and just the ending of it, it's just satisfying. You just, you're just smiling and you're just kind of like, you know what, even though things didn't go out the way that you would have hoped as like an audience member, at least we still got this fabulous ending with the Mona Lisa scene. And just, again, I will be going back and watching Glass Onion but in repeat now that it is on Netflix. So the number one movie, or the movie that I thought was the best movie of the year, taking the number one spot is none other than Top Gun Maverick. Um, really surprising. I, I know that I haven't really spoken about Top Gun Maverick a lot on this channel just because um, I hadn't, you know, posted a movie review for it, but honestly, I, I don't think that there hasn't been a movie where I actually talked about it with my friends and family more than just any other film than I have with Top Gun Maverick. Top Gun Maverick, I mean, this was a movie that was supposed to have came out two years ago, and then, of course, the pandemic happened, and that really pushed the film's release multiple times, right? I think Usually when I think of like a movie being delayed so many times, I all I can think of is it's going to be bad news, like the way that Morbius dealt with that, you know, fate. But in this case, I'm just glad that, you know, in the end of the day, I, I see why it was pushed so many times. This movie was meant to be seen in the big screen, in an IMAX theater, you know, wide, you know, big screen, IMAX theater. And it's just like, I think I haven't seen this film. Like, I, I I, think my whole concept and my whole idea of how an action movie should be has really just changed my expectations of it. Kind of how I, how I hope to see, you know, the visual effects and just kind of the action sequences, how they're going to be executed moving on. Like, I think that this movie may have just changed that, you know, idea of how an action movie should be. Um, I have seen the original, you know, Top Gun movie. I mean, it's a good film. It's a fun film, but... I think that Top Gun Maverick really exceeds everything. Like, as a legacy sequel, it nails the nostalgia. It nails sort of, like, this emotionality that's going on. It nails sort of what is happening with Maverick as a character and what has happened to him. And not just that, but kind of, you know, building up to what happened in the first film. Because it is this movie does, you know, focus on not just Maverick, but also his, you know, Goose's son, 
this was something that like again it really goes to the depths of it just showing just sort of what's going on between the characters this this conflict that becomes a big part of what's going on with maverick and his motivations and what he needs to do and just having this you know operation being the main you know focus of everything and how that has basically you know set the stage of what's going on in this film like you can tell that there's so much tension there's so much intensity that's going on that okay this is not going to be an easy mission by, by the time we get to the end of the film and honestly when you get to that final act i mean i've never felt that much i, I never felt that much chills and goosebumps just watching the final you know the big moment of this film which is the flight sequences and holy crap just to see all of that you know chills just really creeping down all over my body just watching it on the screen that is also an IMAX movie like an IMAX you know theater and just to see kind of what's happening like you're literally like you're like sometimes you have to hold your breath just to see okay do they survive do they make it like just the way that it plays with your you know with your mindset just again just the amount of tension the amount of anxiety that you get out of this film like it, again you do at least get a satisfying pleasing conclusion out of it but just again everything that's happening you're just kind of like holding your breath and just wondering oh my god like what's going to happen next like i've never felt i mean i felt like these moments before but like i mean top gun maverick was not a movie i thought would ever do that ever and again one of the big things about it is just kind of this fact that they are very practical with their uh with their sequences it's not just cgi but it is actually you know practical effects and i think knowing that as like you know the background of how to of what happened in this movie or the behind the scenes of this filming of this film and what led to kind of this you know product um again i think that that has really changed sort of how i think about movies moving forward especially when it comes to visual effects and how integral practical effects need to be in, integrated into sort of how movies should be made especially now that we have movies especially when we have superhero movies like you know the marvel studios and dcu right like this is what we should be seeing as the quality of films moving forward that yes we can use visual effects and cgi but we also need to find the balance with practical effects to kind of add this realism into what's going on and i think that because of that this really add the intensity of what's going on in top gun maverick leading up to that final 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 act that really brings this big chef's kid conclusion that it's like again you are just i mean you can really watch this over and over again and there isn't going to be a time where you're not feeling satisfied with what happened by the by the end of this film so yeah without a doubt top on Maverick was definitely my number one movie of the year um of course like when you're looking at this list it was definitely my number one movie of the year so again i'm i'm not surprised like i mean leading up to, I, I i always act like is there going to be a movie this year that will you know exceed kind of how i felt about top gun maverick and honestly there there, there wasn't any and I'll, I'll i mean i think that if anything top gun maverick deserves that number one spot for me it was just again a movie that really just really took a whole different turn of just the technicalities everything the story the characters sort of just showing this really prestigious legacy film that now is now kind of becoming its own example of what a legacy sequel should be and again i think you have to applaud everybody in this film especially tom cruise who you know who has of course has been really been adamant about and a big supporter of trying to be more practical trying to be more realistic with his stunts and he really just showed kind of the payoff out of that in top gun maverick so yeah not really surprised that top gun maverick is my number one film of the year i think that again it definitely deserves this spot um a movie that I will continue to rewatch every time now that it is on Paramount Plus. Um, but yeah, definitely one of the best movies I've seen this year in 2022. That is it. This is my list of what I think are the 10 best movies of 2022. What do you think? Do you agree with my picks? Are there movies I think that I may have missed? Again, uh, I've had mentioned before, I've not seen every movie. So there are things like, uh, like there are movies like Emily the Criminal or um, After Sun I have not seen yet. So I hope to see them perhaps in the new year but um but let me know what you think what do you think about this list do you agree do you not disagree let me know what your best movies were or what you thought were the best movies of this year in 2022 and yeah make sure to comment and make sure to like and subscribe